All right, guys. Welcome to this webinar on uh, master uh, master class for Excel and BI. Um, I welcome everyone. I'm Captain Gaurav Rana from CN Beyond, and uh, welcome to the presenters, uh, Captain Shalesh uh, Venkat, Captain Ashwin, Melvin, um, Jashri. Um, so thanks everyone uh, for being here. From C and beyond, uh, we have myself, Gaurav, I've got my colleague Pratik and Gaurav Kullu as well. Um, so yeah, um, thanks everyone for being here. Um, uh, Pratik, if we can move to the next slide. Okay, um, a few uh, do's and don'ts. The reason why we are doing this webinar is to increase your awareness. Um, to get information from the credible source um, and so that you can take well-informed decisions, right? So um, whatever information you get, um, it's straight from the experts, people who have been in the industry, who have been using data, people who have, you know, uh, who, who believe there is, um, there is advantage, disadvantage of whatever we are doing. And so they will tell their experience. The idea is that at the end of the webinar, you should be able to take a well-informed decision. Um, a few points which I may request everyone uh, to do is, um, you uh, please keep yourself on mute. Uh, the communication will be through chat window with all the participants. And uh, uh, rename yourself to your name. Sometimes it's the name of your the brand of the phone or laptop. So if you could rename yourself. Um, and the questions which you ask, uh, if possible, let, let, let that be a little bit generic in nature. Specific questions we can take offline uh, at a later stage as well. Um, moving to the next one. All right. Um, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce our presenters today. Uh, I've got Captain Shailesh Bhambani. Captain Shailesh has, uh, has been a mariner, of course. Uh, he's sailed with Anglo, with BW. He has held uh, fairly senior positions at Scorpio, at FKM, and uh, he directs a Singapore-based shipping and trade company, which was chartering 50-plus ships. Um, uh, he's, he was engaged in uh, oil and polymer trading, secured multi-million dollar contracts, and he's essentially driving the business. He's currently with Smart Ship Hub. It's a company which is using data to derive or to help the users take well-informed uh, decision. And he and his company have been using various tools to increase the efficiency. Um, thanks, uh, Captain Shalesh, for being here. Um, I've got Venkert as well. Venkert is the uh, chief engineer. He's got 28 plus years of experience. More importantly, uh, Venkert has, is, is a practitioner, right? He has, he is taught uh, in institutes. He is using data science um, and he's helping companies to derive meaningful information from the data that the companies get. So he's working with various companies across the domain and in across <coughs> and, and not just ship management, but various other fields as well. He's not only proficient in um, Excel, BI, probably that's, you know, long gone. I'm not sure whether he'll be using that a lot, but he's moved on to Python and R programming as well. Um, I've also got, uh, th thanks Venkat for being here. Um, I appreciate. We've also got Captain Ashwin DeMello. Uh, Captain Ashwin is working in the Miko shipping as Marine Manager. And he has expertise in QHSC, vetting, environment compliance, SIRE 2.0. Um, and of course he has sailed as master. Um, he's been ashore for about uh, five years, I guess. And uh, Ashwin has actually, uh, you know, been, been a recent uh, user on uh, uh, the Excel BI, or I will, I, if I may say, proficient user. And so, you know, he'll probably uh, tell us how he's using or his company is using BI in in the various ways. Um, if we move on to the next slide. We've got Jashri over here and Jashri is a non-mariner. 
but she has a uh, core core expertise into excel training so she's been uh, um, uh, in the industry she's a corporate trainer and she does it uh, does excel training for her living um, and uh, she's strong hands on analytics experience on data and uh, she's been with us she's trained uh, probably around 70 to 80 professionals with us through cn beyond <clears throat> we also have uh, melvin and uh, melvin is we are technical manager of course a chief engineer and uh, he's used uh, uh, this course he has taken this course in his personal capacity and he has derived some benefits out of this course as well so so thanks uh, all the presenters for being here at this time, let me take a poll and also check uh, on the uh, participants and see what is their rank, what are they sailing as or uh, are they sailing at all or not. So there would be a poll in front of your screens if you could answer that poll, please. What we'll do is if any one of you have questions at the end of or, or during the slide, you may put the question in the chat window. We'll take the questions at the end of the webinar, but we'll definitely take the Q&As. All right, a few more answers on the poll. All right, I'm, let me end the poll and I'm sharing the results. And this is for everyone to know what kind of cohort we have. So it's about 31% who have settled ashore after sailing, almost 30% top four sailing, 26% in an operations level sailing, and 13% 30, who have never went to sea. That's the participants uh, bifurcation which we have. Um, if we move on to the next slide, please. Okay, um, why did we design this course, CN Beyond, and why are we continuing with this course? So at CN Beyond, what we saw is that there is a requirement from the company side uh, wherein they would want to focus on efficiencies. They understand that technology is probably the best way forward, and they need professionals who can help them in this, right? Um, the best kind of professionals that they can get to support their work is someone who understands maritime and someone who can play with data. If not play, then at least understand the data or what can be done with the data, right? <clears throat> so, and, and, and essentially you can start contributing as soon as possible. And they're unable to find those kind of persons, right? That That's, that's the situation. From the candidate side and uh, um, uh, we, we probably have about, uh, you're connected to about 50 to 60,000 odd maritime professionals, probably more. Um, what we see is that candidates are looking to upskill, but they're confused, which is the best course, how to go about doing it, what are the benefits available, can they get a better job after doing this, and who could assist them in this entire search for a good course so with and i mean that's where our responsibility also comes in as c and beyond we are partnered to more than 150 plus companies i have about 50000 odd seafarers uh, or maritime more than uh, more maritime professionals associated so we designed this course we have already trained 150 plus participants who have derived benefit from it and um, so this is the course wherein we hope to get you guys the first step in terms of understanding data analysis and using it to increase their your efficiency right and <coughs> move forward please so that's our role essentially uh, c and beyond's role uh, in and why that's why we are doing this course i'll take one question and then i'll hand over to shellish and this poll is what do you guys feel? Uh, do you think Excel is used in maritime industry and it can help us be more efficient? That's the first part of the question. And where do you feel Excel can be used in shipping? 
uh, you can just write it down in the chat window. So it's a longish question, but it will be great to have your comments over here. And there's no right or wrong answer. Um, you know, whatever you feel in the first part of the poll, feel free to write. Okay, last five seconds uh, before I end the poll. All right, I'm ending the poll and sharing the results. <clears throat> so say about 80% of the participants have used Excel, either pre-prepared sheet or you use it yourself in a big manner. Um, some have used, uh, have heard people, you know, using it and some have not used it a lot. And we have in the chat window, we, we have people who are writing about uh, uh, where they feel Excel can be used. Um, I'll take a few of those comments. Okay. Computing sheets, budget projections, managing data, record keeping, uh, late time, load rate. Yep, yep, yep. So I, 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 I think it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere you, you use Excel. It's how you can use it better defines your efficiency and defines how quickly you can do the work. Um, over to you, Shalesh, now. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Thank you, Gaurav and the team uh, for organizing this uh, webinar. I think this is one of the most relevant webinars that is there uh, that gets conducted frequently. And this is one of the most relevant, uh, uh, you know, discussion that we should be having today in the industry. I'm very pleased to see uh, uh, Venkat and Ashwin and the others joining as well and the amount of participants that are there, 81 participants, that uh, Gaurav is uh, uh, a success in itself. Uh, I mean, the amount of interest that the webinars has generated. Uh, from our side, uh, from the industry perspective, as I would like to uh, you know, start off with a very basic question for everyone. Uh, uh, Gaurav, if you could go to the next question, uh, next slide, please. Uh, can we ignore data today? That is a very relevant question today for everyone, everyone sitting in the webinar. Um, uh, we would have seen, uh, you know, tried cleaning up a phone. I was just doing that the other day and I realized I only had 60 GB of WhatsApp data to be cleaned. Now 60 GB of WhatsApp data in a single, uh, you know, in a sing single person's phone. And I have one terabyte of uh, cloud space and that itself is running out. So that is the amount of uh, data that is generated by a single person in, you know, not even a lifespan, I would say in a matter of two to three years. So on a daily basis, there's about 3.28 million terabytes of data, which is created every day. That itself is a huge number. That is why you have the data centers and the servers, which are, you know, which is the future, which is taking up. Uh, and as they always say, and it's a old saying now that data is the new oil. And it is a no uh, uh, exaggeration that data is the new oil. But uh, it is something which is which cannot be ignored. It is something which uh, you really need to make use of it. So uh, the first questions that do come to our mind is... Uh, what do we do with the data? Why do we need those data? And how do we improve? So these are the most relevant questions that you would always want to have uh, any person working with data. So important is uh, you have to first understand what the data is. You have to make sure that the data is uh, converted into actionable inside. Um, we with the amount of data that we receive on a daily basis, this can itself become a challenge. It uh, it is not, you can imagine uh, 
finding something on your phone itself, finding a photo in your uh, phone, how challenging it becomes uh, to find a single photo that is your favorite photo or it is clicked in certain point of time and that is why you do have uh, various filters that come into play there's various search options that you come into play so these are given in by companies and why is it to make actionable insights to make life easier because organizations have realized that the amount of data that is produced on a daily basis it cannot be managed unless it is organized how will you organize it you need to understand the data first so when we come to why part of analytics, why is data analytics in the maritime industry so important? Because maritime industry is a very expensive profession. It is a very expensive uh, uh, industry wherein ships are going at a charter rate of thirty to forty thousand dollars a day. So you can imagine it is almost a thousand dollars an hour to more. Now, imagine if you're searching for some data for two hours or you're searching for information uh, which could be readily available to you uh, and you're searching for it. It can cost a lot of dollars. It can cost a lot of inefficiencies. So data analytics is utilized to improve efficiencies, reduce costs, and more importantly, increase safety. Most importantly, data helps professionals understand and fix the bottleneck, uh, bottleneck in their supply chain. Today, if uh, I'm able to pinpoint, uh, okay, this is the issue, this is the reason for which my profitability, which could be uh, uh, 20%, but is reduced to 12.5%, every organization would want to do that. So data analytics has become a key core in every organization, in every uh, every uh, company wants to understand the amount of data that their uh, ships are generating that their organization is generating so that takes me to the next question is how do we uh, you know understand this data if i talk about my phone itself or your phone itself the uh, uh, iOS and Android do it does have all these various features and the various apps to clean up data, clean up data more than five MB, uh, clean up repetitive, uh, uh, you know, uh, files and more forwarded files and all. But when we talk about an organization or when we talk about a single ship, you can imagine a single ship itself is an industry on its own. When multiple machineries with multiple uh, data points that is there, it, is it easy to do that unless uh, the answer is simple answer is no unless you are skilled uh, skilled to do that skilled to understand and more importantly that is why uh, there are tools like excel power bi tableau python these are the most commonly used tools um, that is why i say uh, the most relevant uh, relevance of this webinar today is that uh, it is touching on the basics that uh, Excel Power BI, before uh, we get into more uh, detailed data analytics, get into data science and uh, uh, more into predictive, you first need to understand the data. You need to arrange the data. You need to collate the data. Some of my speakers will speak about it in the subsequent slides. But uh, Gaurav, if you could go to the next slide. Yeah. As you see, the amount of data that is presented on a single ship each day, yeah, it is close to 4,000 data points. And when I tell you that you can receive these data points every five seconds, yeah, so we do receive these kind of data points every five seconds. And when I multiply it to 60,000 ships, yeah, you imagine the amount of data that has been generated from the ships alone. This, if I talk about a single ship, 4,000 data points, into five seconds or 15 seconds, you can do the maths, the amount of data that is coming each single day from a single ship. The AIS, ARPA, you have the speed, you have engine related information. Uh, what do you do with that data? It becomes, it becomes humongous. You need specialized servers, you need uh, GPUs and all to make sure that these datas are processed in the correct manner to take actionable insight. Uh, next slide, please. So what does uh, this uh, create, all this data? It creates opportunities. Yeah. So uh, opportunities wherein uh, it is what we call the fourth revolution. 
uh, it is the uh, industry 4.0. We do have, you would have heard IoT of things. You would have heard IIoT of things, yeah? So internet of things, industrial internet of things. Why is it important? Because you really cannot ignore it today. You want to sit in your car, you can, you can, you're sitting in your house, you use an app, you get the car air condition started. You're getting into your house, you want, you want the room to be cooled, your curtains can be closed remotely using a mobile phone and your ACs can be started using remotely. This is the similar way the industry has been getting into. We are talking about autonomous ships, we are talking about the new mass code which has been developed by IMO and which is going to be mandatory soon from uh, 2032. And is 2032 uh, far off? It is not. It is just around the corner. And uh, what do we need to do? We need to scale ourselves. We need to upskill ourselves. Uh, we need to be ready for the future. So there are various opportunities in maritime only relating and working around data. few of them is... Uh, simulations, uh, cybersecurity, uh, automation, predictive analysis. Yeah. Uh, if I tell you today, I can actually uh, uh, tell you when your machinery is going to break down. I can tell you what to do a trend analysis and tell you how the uh, engine is working, how efficient it is. It will be, it is something which is not good to have it is a must have because imo and i as i see 80 percent of the participants or 85 percent of the participants do have some maritime background either they have sailed or they have been uh, uh part of the maritime industry they do understand the steep uh imo requirements that have been put across for net zero for 2050 and 2030 and 2040 so how do we reach there unless we don't understand the data we will not be able to make it more efficient and just unless we don't understand our ships the how efficiently they are working how effective they are in reducing the carbon footprint we will not be able to do any uh actionable insight so this is why data analytics data the what is the data how can we make it more better is very important uh up the next slide so uh, uh to sum it up uh just due to paucity of time as well uh is there a uh, career for uh, mariners with data skill i would say uh it is a no-brainer Today, I can have a data scientist sitting with me, but if he does not know uh, what a propeller is and what a, you know, auxiliary engine is, it will become a challenge for me. As good as, as good as data scientist or as good a, a statistician he could be, but if I have to really make him understand what an auxiliary engine does, that is, a, uh, that, that takes a lot of resources and, uh, uh, training for organizations so where does it help we already have marinas who understand these uh, shipping itself comes with its own jargons comes with its own uh, set of uh, you know vocabulary it comes with its own set of uh, understanding of uh, maritime uh, good weather bad weather how the vessel performs in good weather how the vessel performs in bad weather so there is a huge uh, requirement for mariners with data skill sets. Mariners, as uh, as mariners, we do understand the maritime. Now you skill it up, upskill yourself with the data technology or understanding the data. That is the combination that organizations are looking at. Uh, data is not new to the industry. It is now. It is just that it is now more frequently used. It is used in much more detail. It is used now to make actionable insights. It is used now to take decisions. You would have seen, uh, even in a cricket match earlier, uh, people used to just go and see, okay, how the you know pitch is, how the outfield is, uh, and then decide what the strategy is going to be. But do you see the cricketers sitting on computers rather than sit watching the match? They're, they're sitting on computers. They're analyzing a lot of things. They're analyzing the data. Before they go into the match, they know what the strength of the batsman is. They know what the weakness of the bowler is. And according to that, they devise the strategy. And it is a similar thing that companies are now doing. They're understanding the data. They're understanding the skills and they're understanding how efficient their ships are to make them run more effectively so with that i would uh, pass it on to gaurav again uh, there are multiple uh, 
opportunities in the field wherein uh, uh, mariners can use data, can upskill themselves. And uh, trust me, there is a lot of opportunities out there for mariners uh, with the right skill sets. Uh, over to you, Gaurav. Thanks, Shalesh. Thanks. Um, if we move to the next slides, I think, uh, uh, okay, let's move to Venkat's slide. Uh, uh, um, um, and we would like to welcome Venkat over here. Um, and as I already introduced uh, Venkat, um, he's, uh, he's using the data. Uh, Excel and BI is used uh, uh, earlier, but nowadays he's also using Python uh, and other coding to use the data. And um, uh, and then over to you, Venkat, for your uh, presentation, please. I think it's the next slide for Venkat. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Captain Gaurav. Uh, thank you, Captain Selish, for all the good words. Uh, me and Captain Selish work uh, together very closely in Smartship Hub. So very good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for joining in. I am Chief Engineer Venkat Krishna. And I'm here to share some practical use cases of utilizing vessel historic data for optimization, visualization, and condition monitoring, to name a few. The slides, uh, the previous slide, uh, if you can go to the previous slide. Uh, yeah. So this particular slide shows some key areas where data and its analysis plays a very, very important part in serving useful insights that drives business decisions. So weather routing, route optimization, fuel optimization, predictive maintenance or condition monitoring, uh, and uh, speed consumption curve analysis. These are some of the key areas where data uh, and its analysis plays a very, very important part. The last one specifically, I would like to mention the speed consumption curve analysis. More, of, more often, we are actually relying on the speed, uh, uh, the C trial and the shop trial reports, which are actually performed on a very limited test conditions, if you agree with me. So when the vessel is running, she is she is encountering a lot of uh, uh, you know weather conditions, or you know going to different zones where the the speed and sh uh, shop trial test results may not be adequate to uh, evaluate the vessel performance. So then, what do you do? So basis the data that is derived from uh, your high frequency or the noon reports. This becomes a valuable set of information as you keep collecting data year on year. You can analyze this data to actually model in Excel or Power BI or uh, Python or uh, R programming, whichever you are comfortable with, and the, depending the complexity of the model you want to go into, you can use these tools to derive, uh, to generate models, first of all, and then derive useful insights, generate curves, which will be actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, representative of the vessel's operating condition as she passes through these different uh, trade routes and her zones. So this is a very, very useful uh, analysis and we are actually actively doing this in, in practice uh, because not just because the, the customers generally sometimes reject your uh, shop, trial, shop trial and C trial reports. They want to see something what they can relate to. So data plays a very important part here. So having said that, uh, let's move to the next slide, please. So this is a very uh, useful example, which I'm showing you optimization using, uh, you, can, you can do some basic modeling with Excel. Uh, as you can see here, uh, you want to predict uh, fuel consumption, which is a very hot topic for everybody coming uh, because with this advent of uh, emissions and the fuel EU maritime and EU ETS and a lot of uh, uh, regulation that are suddenly thrown into the maritime industry. Naturally, uh, everything starts with the fuel consumption and how much you can save on those and basic and uh, to, to reduce the carbon content of these uh, uh, burnt fuels and uh, reduce your penalties and uh, uh, you know uh, you can keep trading and keep profiting in your uh, uh, in, in the industry so this is a very important example in which you want to predict the fuel consumption for a particular draft or a speed a wind uh, wind uh, uh, wind force and the rpm these are some of the parameters you know but you don't know what is the fuel consumption you cannot estimate it because it's not readily available and it keeps changing as the Hull degrades or the you know the wear and tear takes place for the vessel. So this is something which constantly keeps changing. In fact, keeps increasing. The slide has changed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So as you can see here in this uh, particular thing, two different scenarios have been shown. There are, there is a model which is running behind this, which has already been done in Excel. And by knowing just your uh, speed and draft 
and the relevant uh, C state and your RPM, you can compute the uh, fuel consumption, which is in the gray uh, boxes, in the matrices inside this uh, particular Excel sheet. So this, this kind of uh, uh, capabilities Excel has got to do some basic modeling, where you can derive some meaningful insights and you can keep performing this. It's not very difficult to do. And uh, if, you, if you know a little bit of statistics is required to understand uh, when you're modeling this, yeah. So once you do this, it can give you uh, better insights and you can drive uh, or you can optimize or regulate your fuel consumptions. Next slide, please. Excel has also got a good, uh, uh, it also allows us to develop some engaging visualizations as shown in the slide, which not only enhances understanding, but showcases your creativity as well. Cleaning and processing data before data modeling is another important application where Excel plays a very significant role. Now, in this particular slide, there are some parameters, some uh, you know examples of some parameters for the main engine has been shown. And you can see some percentages marked below. This actually shows the health or efficiency of that particular parameter, which has been computed through complex modeling. And you can see how that parameter is performing, knowing efficiency of each and every parameter, not just the entire machinery. You can compute the efficiency of each and every parameter, and you can go surgically and attack only that parameter to regulate it, rather than knowing the entire efficiency of the engine and then wondering, which parameter is contributing to the lower, higher efficiency? You can actually drill down to the, you know, uh, the key parameter which is causing the low or the high efficiency, and regulate your, uh, you know, uh, engine operation basis that. Next slide, please. This slide is about condition monitoring or predictive diagnosis, which is another very useful tool which every customer asks, and everybody wants to know how the engine is performing or your machinery is performing in real time. And uh, not just referring to your shop test or your performance test reports, which are used as baselines. The baselines here, as you can see here in the green color in the slide, these are the baselines which have been drawn from your operational data of that particular machinery. The machinery which I have taken here for an example is a compressor. This is generally for an oil and gas uh, equipment. But of course, you can relate it to any machinery on board. So uh, for a compressor, vibrations become a very important part of uh, uh, you know, judging for for any rotating machinery for that for that matter vibrations is a very important part of uh, analyzing that particular machinery so as you can see here uh, a baseline has been generated using data modeling um, using complex models using python and the green color baseline has been drawn for that current operating conditions at which it is running and there is a black line which is running very close to that uh, until may it is almost running very uh, you know overlapping that very close to it that means the predicted and the actual values are actually matching. But after May 22, the, you see there is a sudden rise in the vibration, which is a cause of concern. Now, there is an actionable insight that is required here to be done by the operator because the maker's alert is quite high. As you can see, it is at 10.5. And we have generated a predictive threshold at 9.5, much, much lesser than your maker's alert, just because we want to attack the anomaly right at its root as soon as it starts deviating. So as soon as it starts deviating, if the operator notices this, and before it reaches your you know upper threshold, or uh, even if it reaches this uh, red red line, he'll get an alert. He can immediately take an action and regulate it and understand the cause of vibration. Maybe stop the compressor and see what is causing the problem. And you can save a lot of money and you can save a lot of uh, you know a lot of uh, downtime for this particular machinery. So this is an excellent example of an uh, you know. The usage of data that has been collected from the ships, modeling it through Python. And I wouldn't say only Python was involved in this. Somewhere Excel, Power BI were also used in processing this data, cleaning this data when you're doing this, doing this exploration. And finally, the final uh, data set has been passed to Python for doing its complex modeling. So uh, I would say all these tools in you know conjunction with each other play a very important part and will give you a meaningful insight. So this is a very classic example of predictive diagnostic and condition monitoring. Next slide, please. This is again a repetition of the first uh, slide which I had shown about the fuel optimization which was modeled in Excel. Here I have used a little complex model uh, in Python, a similar uh, uh, you know, uh, prediction model for a fuel uh, consumption, wherein here you can actually uh, you know, uh, tune the model better, uh, increase, increase, improve the accuracy and see what all you can do, you can add more variables, reduce more variables, you know, and you can perform more iterations in Python. And then you can uh, predict this uh, fuel consumption. So this is basically an app or an application 
wherein uh, you can predict fuel consumption using data that is derived from the ship. This again can be used for driving decisions, uh, you know, uh, for your fuel optimization, reducing emissions and all those kind of things which uh, are very relevant today. Next slide, please. So opportunities, so there are very, there are a lot of immense opportunities in data science today. AI ML are transforming nearly every industry, making a foundation knowledge of these technologies very essential. So tools like statistics, Excel, Power BI, Python, and R are highly valuable for anyone working on data science, data science projects. So continuous learning in, is crucial in this field. So incorporating a little each day will strengthen your foundation and keep you adaptable in revolving uh, in, in a rapidly evolving sector. So do remember to apply what you cons learn consistently to reinforce your understanding. This is very important. It's not that you uh, you have taken this course, you know, because you found it fascinating for the moment, but then after that you forgot about it. It, it. it is not going to work that way. You need to you need to apply it on a daily basis. Take some problem statements, take some data. The easiest data you'll get it easy from your short trial, C trial reports. There are a lot of data available for uh, having. Most of you are mariners. You will get a lot of data from your ship. So take this data, analyze it using what you've learned, and you'll be surprised at what what kind of uh, you know insights you'll be able to draw. So uh, with this, I stop here and hand over to the next speaker. Thank you for all your attention. Yeah. So, good day to you. Thank you, Venkat. Thank you. Thanks for showing us uh, the insights, how you know, you've, uh, you've created the graphs where you could predict uh, and the tables where you could predict uh, uh, the, the, the next uh, steps or, or, or the next things to happen. Uh, very fascinating. And uh, honestly, Venkat uses a lot of Python um, as well, a bit of coding, a lot of coding as well. Um, and I, for us, I think that's the way to go. But the first steps are probably an Excel or BI wherein you, one should understand whether you are enjoying doing it. If you enjoy doing it, then of course, go to the next steps. And uh, for those people, hopefully with Venkat, we'll plan one, uh, a course on the advanced data analysis as well. Um, so, so that's the next steps, but first, as, as he said, you should enjoy doing it. Uh, hopefully you would apply it in your, uh, real life scenarios and then take the next steps. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Um, thanks Venkat. Uh, we should now have captain Ashwin, uh, uh, coming in and explaining about uh, how he has used, uh, uh, Excel. Uh, BI and uh, Captain Ashwin is one of the you know practitioners of, of the course. He's used this course and uh, he'll share his experience. Uh, over to you, Captain Ashwin. Uh, you can stop sharing, uh, Pratik. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Captain Ashwin Jamalo. I am a marine manager with uh, Damico Ishima Ship Management based in Mumbai. And uh, previously, uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, a little higher, Ashwin. It's it's a little feeble. We can hear you, but just about. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. It's still the same. Now? How is it now? Yeah, still the same. When we tested, we were able to hear you much better. How is it now? Um, oh, mostly same only. Same. Okay. Oh, maybe I should just log out, log out and log in, please. Then no, maybe I'm just trying to understand. Is it? Yeah, it's better, better, better. Now. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, my name is Captain Ashwin DeMello and uh, I'm the Marine Manager with the Damico ship uh, Aishima India. So, uh, we are a big organization. I previously worked with uh, Scorpio Marine. Um, I was sailing with them and then uh, shifted ashore in 2015. So, I was doing a lot of data crunching with the, when I was in Scorpio as well, when um, in the environmental compliance with oily water separators, uh, be it uh, exhaust gas uh, scrubber systems, uh, the logs that you used to receive. And it was pages and pages of data that you used to receive. And that is when I learned the power of uh, Excel and uh, Power BI, so to say. 
then in 2022 i came to uh, uh, when i joined the miko and i saw people were using excel <clears throat> excel is like i could say um, like maruti 800 okay so you get something out of it but when you have a lot of data churning that tool may not give you a visualization that you need for a overview okay and uh, and that is when i started when i was when i started taking interviews um, my other co-workers and you know uh, managers and uh, marine heads started asking me why are you asking the candidates power bi we don't have the software here so uh, that is when i said i said but we are way far behind if you have to understand data and get the results out of it and see where we are uh, with the inspections audits or whatever i said we have to have advanced tool and i do not have the time to sit and do the crunching of those numbers or uh, have the data in hand so then one of my um, who was supposed to be actually a speaker here but um, then he said, why don't we do a course for everyone? I said, that would be great. And that is when CN Beyond and uh, Captain Gaurav Rana came into the picture. And uh, we did that course for the whole uh, team and different departments, in fact, um, Excel and Power BI. And uh, I'm glad to tell you that uh, my team in the Marine Department and uh, also the other departments, the PMS, uh, the technical team, they are all using Power BI for using and generating data and presenting uh, uh, to, you know, uh, the data to somebody who needs it. Uh, it becomes quicker, easier, uh, simplified way of showing where we are going wrong or what needs to be done. As in the Marine, I can speak for myself. In the Marine Department, we have now wetting inspections, uh, SIRE 2.0, for those who understand it, um, different ways, human process, tool, uh, I mean, uh, hardware and uh, negative observation, positive observations. And we have about 60, 70 ships. And with this kind of numbers that are coming on, we don't know where to head to and how to. So this is one part. Then we have internal audits. Then we have external flag state inspection, port state. And I wanted to get up. We have navigation audit. Then we have various streams, cargo related. So, so many streams and I wanted to get, let's say, out of navigation in all these vetting, cargo, audits, internal audit, external, or how many observations have we got in total? Which are the ones that we have to cater to? Which are repetitive? And to get this out of 60, 70 ships, we needed something to do, drastically change something. Okay. And we use also other softwares for mooring and all those things. And uh, that also was a challenge. So, we said, let's have our teams uh, do this Power BI. So I explained to my other co-workers as well. I said, what is Power BI? What is Excel? How it can do? I showed them a simple way of what I knew, basic. In fact, uh, with uh, CN Beyond and Captain Gaurav, I have done the course also by myself. So it's not only my team or somebody, but also uh, that I have done. So uh, everybody has done most of them and now they're using it and it is becoming easier for us to analyze this data i will present to you um some of the data that i have uh that what my team has created um, am i still audible now or has the volume dropped no it's it's perfect it's perfect okay all right okay uh and about the other speakers i think Captain Salish and me go a long way. We were, uh, just to give you a brief about that, we were uh, uh, working as, I mean, we studied together in our mates and masters, then we worked in Scorpio together. He was also doing great in Scorpio, uh, doing in the voyage operations and uh, yeah. So all the claims and all that thing he was handling and I was in the environment. And so we worked together also and we studied together also. So we, we, we go very, very long way. Yes, we, Okay, let me uh, just present what I have. Are you all able to see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay, one moment. I think you're seeing the wrong screen. Just a minute.
Okay, I will sing this database for 2023. Correct. Correct. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So this is one of the databases that we created uh, for last year. And uh, you can see that the type of audits that we have and the number of inspections under each audit that were conducted. Okay. And uh, then these are the databases in what categories have we uh, got these observations okay and internal audit if you can see the blue mark there are four regarding documentation in uh, internal audit then there are 21 in masters nav audit then there are two in psc port state control vdr so when i click on those numbers i can see okay there are 21 in master i can do it for h1 that is half yearly if i want to select I can say it is half yearly, it, the numbers change. I, if I want to do for only for the second half of the year, I can do it. And uh, if I click on, you know, remove the clicks, it's for the full year. I can even then select those parameters what I want. So that is one thing that, uh, that we did. It is easier to see of all the data that we got, how do we analyze this data? Where do we stand? Which are the areas that we need to attend? And... Uh, it becomes easier. <clears throat> so uh, now if you can see like, uh, so this is somebody has written it for me, please click on the blue icon so that it, so then you can see under documentation, the observations was so and so, and you can then click and see what the observation was. Okay. Uh, this is kind of another tree model. I can select the source that I want to get the data from, the parameter that I want to select, whether it is bridge equipment, communication, documentation, human element, navigation practice. Okay, I can do it for H1, I can do it for H2. Some more, uh, like kind of a master's nav audit, I wanted to see which are the ones that are that are concerning. And this is a brief insight. These are not all the observations. These are the few of them. Okay, and I just want to see regarding documentation only then I click on documentation and I see, okay, these are the ones that we probably need to attend to, okay, across the field. Okay, same thing for voice data recorder, some similar where we have analyzed it. Internal audits, okay, which are the ones which are, we can see the graph here where which are concerning, okay, and I can even play it, okay, so, Betting inspections again, similar kind of <laughs> similar kind of graphs. And that was one of the presentation. Then I can show you also about uh, a little more complex. This is uh, are you all seeing this screen uh, where uh, you can see all the ships here? Yep, we can. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, this is about mooring, uh, where we have the ropes. The vessels have to sometimes change end to end. We have to rotate the ropes. We have to discard the ropes. Uh, we have uh, we have a tool. In fact, we have a software for it. But that software was not giving what what we wanted. Uh, we have told them, but they said it will take time. So in the meantime, uh, I said, but we do not have that time because the 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 maker of the software can take his own sweet time as per the industry need. Uh, probably because he has many owners and we are not the only ones. So he will take his own sweet time to uh, get the data crunching. But for us, I needed it immediately. I needed to see overview of what my one of the vessel, if I click on, let's say this vessel, CLD Houston, and I, I say, okay. So it tells me immediately the numbers keep changing. Are you seeing that? Yeah. So which is the next rotation due? When is the next end-to-end -end of this rope? How many ropes of its high modulus ropes they have? How many synthetic ropes they have? What is the general condition? It's good. When is the first, who is the manufacturer? Whether it is NEG4 compliant, non-compliant, I can click and probe and see how many, even if they were non-compliant, how many of them. So, you know, how many tails they have. We can all do that. I can keep clicking on the uh, 
the vessels and the data will keep changing. For that, it's important to have raw data that is fed in correctly. That is the crux of it. So if your raw data is correct, then to get a um, Excel will not give you, it may, but it is a very, it is a little tedious. And it doesn't give you that overview, the dynamics that what Power BI brings, okay? So the Power BI is nothing but a data visualization tool. They have to understand that it's not doing anything extra than what you have fed in. So, okay, whatever you have fed in, you can then play with the numbers to get what you want out of it. So, so that, that's one of the tools. <laughs> this is one of my... Uh, uh, Superintendents, when he visited the last ship visit that he did, and uh, okay, so I wanted him to give me an overview of the vessel that he visited and what, uh, okay, the, all the audits that he did, and uh, which are the areas that are concerning to us. So, safety, navigation, appearance, environmental documentation engine so you can see those boxes here so you can see the big box is the safety part then the appearance part is not that great something wrong so i know the environment part the navigation when i click on it so i can get the navigation observations here these are the issues these are not all of them these are a few of uh, those that i needed and how many of them were closed on when he visited and how many are still open. So you can see that graph also here uh, that I can see. And uh, I have made it categorizing in hardware, human and process. So I can see the graph where the person himself was not aware or was it that the equipment was faulty or was there no procedure? We, we need to amend the procedure or something like that. So it gives me a fair idea of how the ship is. So this is what now uh, the superintendents are doing when they go on a ship visit. They create a PBIX, they send it to me and to the other management in the organization, and we get a data visualization. Very quickly, we understand what the condition of this vessel is. Yeah. So I think from my end, uh, that's it. Um, some more chats, but it's all same, similar. Uh, this is about audits and inspections uh, due dates. Um, so I can just scroll down the dates when I want to see the expiry dates of which some vessels, then I can click on which vessels will come due, which certificate, when it will be due. So you can see here earliest expiry date is 24 Jan 2025. So these are all the work that my team is doing and they're still progressing. It's not complete, but uh, you can see there's great work being done. And uh, thanks to Gaurav, thanks to CN Beyond and uh, Jai Shri and everybody that we have worked with uh, in uh, doing these courses. And this is the result of it that I can say. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's it from my end. Thank you so much, Ashwin, for, you know, talking and showing us about how you are using this. Because, you know, one thing is um, learning, the other is implementing, using it. And it's, I mean, I've, it's like I'm a lot more prouder seeing that it's being you know used, it's being implemented. We, we have let the guys lose. So we said uh, we just say now I want this in this way, the thoughts are there, and my team uh, just does the work to put it across and uh, we coordinate well. So I do not have the time to sit and do all this, but I tell them what I want and they execute it. So important is that at the end of the day we get what we want here. Yeah. That's a very, very important point which you made because uh, I was talking to someone yesterday and, and he was a senior person working ashore and he said, I'm not going to use Excel. I don't have that much of time. Um, but I guess um, as a manager, you should know what can be done and at least at a level that you were doing that you, you can be on the tool and you can play with the tool. That That's right. important. You don't have to um, you know analyze the data, but knowing what it can do, that, that makes a lot of difference. You can then motivate, you can get the work done there. Yeah, important is that give them the time because they're also learning. So I don't say I need it tomorrow or day afternoon. I said, this is one thought. So right now I need only so much, but the end result has to be this. So then I said, maybe in a one month's time or two months time, you can work on it. 
and whenever you have free time to do it uh, in, in in the office you're doing nothing so you can <laughs> so this is what the guys have done so yeah thanks for the amazing testimonial uh, as well yeah. thank you cn beyond thank you thank you also. And I guess Gaurav Kullu is the one who, you know, helped us over here. Thanks, Gaurav, uh, for the amazing training. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, thank you. Actually, uh, I think we did this training somewhere in June, I guess. And uh, today is just about five months. I'm really amazed uh, the way you have uh, implemented it and taken it to the next level. Yeah. Because... We needed something. We learned it. I know what I wanted, but the guys didn't know what to do with it, uh, how to do it. So that's why the course happened. Okay, with everyone, it was mainly, firstly, for Marine team, that's where that, uh, that uh, seed was sown. Because when I started asking people, because I wanted somebody who knew Power BI. Then uh, Captain Amandeep said, why do you want somebody with Power BI? You know, you are going to hire somebody with only Power BI. I said, because right now nobody knows how what is Power BI and I, I cannot do with the same team. So I need somebody else. So that is a, why don't we do the course? And then other department jumped in and said, we wanted to do the course. And that is how all... He discussed with you and uh, the things happened. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank sir. you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we now have uh, Jeshri with us. Uh, Jeshri will be uh, is the trainer uh, for the course. She is the one who did it for the Miko and who will again be here in this course. And uh, so, Pratik, if you could share the presentation and uh, then uh, Jeshri, over to you for explaining how the course is panned out, the syllabus, uh, how many hours it is going to be. So over to you, uh, Jayashree. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Welcome, guys. I think so. Up till now, you might have uh, realized the power this tool will give you. Now, uh, you are convinced with this that, yes, you need to upgrade and take your level a bit higher so that you may bring lots of automations in your data. So you can see the amazing outputs uh, on the screen, the amazing reports created. And then as rightly said, uh, being at the top level also, you need to know how to use that tool many times because then you know what a tool can do for you and what it can't do. You know, sometimes you're not even aware that a tool can help us with those things. And then we are rigid to, okay, this is what, a particular tool like Power BI can do only visualization, but it is not just visualizations. It can help you to go ahead with transformation also. So understanding what can be done and what cannot be done is again a thing to be aware of. With that, uh, I'll just help you with understanding the outlines we have planned. And this outline has been created as per uh, the inputs we have got from the expertise, from the captains what exactly the seafarers or marine time users do need. What are the techniques or the tools they use a lot or maybe the props they are facing a lot. And, you know, understanding all those things, we have created an outline where you don't need to bother that I don't know so much of Excel or uh, I'm at very basic. We are going to start from very basic. You can see the very first function as sum. But then it's not writing a simple sum function, it is how to use your keyboard smartly to write that formula. I always in my training focus a lot on using your keyboard smartly in Excel so that you can work faster. So our starting of the session will start with basics of using your keyboards, how the navigation techniques are. I really don't like using mouse aloud. So I'm forcing you also keep your mouse aside and use the keyboard shortcut keys. May take some time at the start, but slowly you'll be used to that. So some uh, simple functionalities and then we'll be understanding an amazing concept which Excel is having but has been ignored. I don't know why. The concept called as referencing. Because when you're passing a cell address, it's fine, it works well. But when you are trying to copy that formula somewhere down or to the right side, everything gets messed up. Or maybe you do go with very static reports. Always keep one thing in mind that when you're creating your reports, keep them as dynamic as you can. So that whenever or any user, in case if someone else is using that, can change some small parameters and your whole report is changing. Now that brings an awesome output on the screen. To bring those outputs, understanding the concept of referencing plays an important role. So we'll cover up that. And then some logical functionalities uh, where based on conditions you're taking certain actions. Uh, maybe you have heard the functionalities like if, 
combining that if with and and if with or because a single if function may sometimes not uh, create the outputs which you are expecting so you can combine that with other formulas to bring more complex outputs on the screen and then again there is an amazing tool in excel called as conditional formatting uh, maybe like a simplest example, you have certain data and you want to highlight a particular value from the data. Normally what we do is we do go apply a filter and then we highlight that and it is working well. But then what I want is if I change a value in a cell, that entire impact should change. Or maybe I want to give my management and excess rights that you pick something in the drop down. Whatever you pick, as per that, my report is getting displayed. So you have different vessels. You can just pick a particular vessel. My report will highlight those vessel records for you. That is what conditional formatting will help us to do. So a simple conditional formatting to start with, but then we'll understand how to give a dynamic look to that, how we can have multiple conditional formattings on one single column, or how we can write even our formulas under the conditional formatting panel. And with that, absolutely no doubt, I'll be giving you some assignments, maybe some generalized one, or maybe related to your data sets like seafarers, which you use a lot. And then you'll be working on the data. Because the second thing which we want is, we want you to become expert in uh, using those tools. So we'll be giving you lots of assignments to work along with us. And that will be our session number one, which will be for three hours. And then our session number two will include, again, a very important concept called as data cleaning. So we, we never sit and write the data. There is someone else who is doing the data entry for us. And for some no reason, they just do mess up with the data. They give extra spacing to the data or they write the data in lowercase or uppercase format, whatever they wish. And then we are into in trouble when we are presenting. So we need to understand how to clean the data. You cannot directly take a data and start reporting. You have to first clean and prepare that data. So we'll learn those cleaning techniques. A lot many are there in the cleaning part. And after that, we'll understand the concept of how can I take some conditional actions? Like maybe I want to add something, but then based on conditions I want to add, or maybe I want to count the number of transactions related to a particular criteria. And over there, we'll be understanding an amazing concept called as naming a range. If you're working in Excel, you might have faced this prop that if you are at sheet number two, you want to take something from sheet number one and create your report. It becomes challenging because then you have to navigate from one sheet to other, select the data and then come back. So we'll understand an amazing concept where instead of navigating, you'll be just sitting at one place and completing the whole formula by writing the name of a column. I personally like that uh, concept a lot because that helps me to sit at one place, not to bother about the referencing also and complete the formula. Later on when I go, it's readable also for me. So we'll understand how we can use that technique along with our statistical functions. And then the concept of data validations, because being at the management level, maybe sometimes you're creating a template for somebody to do a data entry for you, but then you want to take care that they don't write an incorrect values in a particular data set. So we'll be learning how to restrict the values to be entered in a particular page. And then if you're giving your reports to somebody, you want to give a restriction also that the user is not allowed to touch a particular part of your worksheet. So how can I make that protection on my data sets? That will be our session number two along with, again, lots of exercise and assignments. Can we go for the next slide, please? Our session number three, again for three hours, will be the place where you'll be understanding the concept of breaking your data with the concept text to column. But then again, there is something called as changing the data type when you are splitting your data. So we'll be focusing on that because this tool will sometimes help you to even get the correct date formats, you know, when you're pulling a data from some XYZ applications, the data format over there may be month, day, and year. And for you, it is day, month, and year. And then you're not able to access those dates, values in your Excel. So we'll be learning the concept of how to change the data type while you're importing. We'll see some simple date functionalities, but then again, we'll be understanding how we can work on dates a bit more and change their formats as per our own wish or maybe find out the working days between the two dates we have. And then comes the amazing part, which people are in love with, called as writing and lookup functionalities. Maybe if you are an Excel user, you might have heard a formula called as VLOOKUP, but it's not just the only function you have under the lookup categories. You have lots of functions like VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, or combining those two functionalities with match, handling your errors with the help of if error or if any, and 
if there are some loopholes in this formulas, how to go for an advanced month college index along with match to fetch the required data without changing your data sets. Maybe if you have worked, you might have done this that your search column is somewhere towards the end or in the middle. And then you're just rearranging your entire sheet so that the search column is at the start. No, that's not an correct way of working. So you need to understand how ever the data is, I should be able to write a formula and create my report at the end instead of rearranging the data set and changing my formula accordingly with the logic of index and match. And then again, some assignments on this part. That will be our session number three. And then session number four will help you to understand the concept of table. Again, a simple tool, but can give you amazing outputs. Uh, as you might have heard just now, uh, at Dummico itself, uh, many of the users have converted their entire data to tables because they realize the power of that simple tool. So you'll be understanding how this tool can help you to again give dynamic impacts on your data sets. They were not aware of that and they were creating very static reports. So you'll understand that. And then you'll be understanding how to present. You have a data, but then you have to sometimes summarize your data by using pivot tables and then present them and create dashboards and give some interactivities like you have seen on the screen, in fact. But those who are done in Power BI, you can do the same thing, more or less same things in your Excel also. So we'll be covering the part of how to present your data with the help of charts, with the help of pivot tables, and how to interconnect them with the help of slides or tool. And then towards the end, oh, again, some assignments on this part and a short briefing of whatever we have learned, a short recap of whatever we have learned. And then some queries and questions from your end are always welcome. In between also, if you feel that this is your data set and you need some help, as in trainer, I'm always here to help you out. Any question on this part, if you have, you can drop your queries in the chat box afterwards also. For now, I hope you have got a pretty good understanding of what all contents you'll be learning in just well as another session one, two, three, and four. That's all from my side, guys. Thank you. Over to you, Gaurav. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Jashri. You explained the entire curriculum, how we're going to break it down into those uh, 12 hours very well. Uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, if I may just add, not in the in one session, two hours will be taken by Jashri and one hour will be taken by a maritime trainer. So that's the reason why we call it maritime focused uh, course, wherein the idea will be we have a, a person who is uh, who's excelled at uh, Excel, who's using the over here, who comes from a maritime background, who's probably using it ashore. And then uh, when you learn the concepts from Jashri, the person tells you how you can actually use it in your day-to-day -day life, right? So the person will give you a, a, two, three, four examples wherein you can understand how you can uh, use it as well. So, so that's that, that's how it will uh, turn out to be. Uh, thanks, thanks, Jayashree, once again. And uh, we now move to the next one. So we got to know about uh, Excel and uh, uh, now let's talk about BI and um, Pratik, if we move to the next slide and uh, the next one, and if we can have uh, Gaurav Kullu, who's going to be the trainer for uh, BI, uh, he's of course a master mariner and he's trained uh, all the participants who have passed through, uh, who've taken this course from C and beyond. So Gaurav, if you could come in and tell us more about BI, what is it actually about first of all? And uh, also, you know, uh, what kind of uh, use cases you may want to use. So so that's something that we could talk about. Uh, while I just take a poll on from the audience and to understand what is their level of understanding of BI. Um, so over to you, Gaurav, while the poll gets answered. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Captain Gaurav, and all the uh, panelists here uh, for sharing such wonderful insights. Uh, Pratik, uh, can I share my screen? Thank you. Okay, uh, could you see my screen? Can you please confirm? Yep, got it. We can see yes. this. And, uh, Okay, basically, yeah, uh, like we discussed so uh, so far, whatever we have discussed here, and uh, what we have seen is uh, the uh, 
Excel. Excel may have certain limitations, but it is one of the most important tools as we uh, talk about data analysis. It forms the uh, foundation of uh, the entire uh, data analysis uh, in most of the cases. So uh, when we talk about uh, data analysis and the various tools, so some of the way, uh, common uh, tools that are used uh, depending upon your roles or what you are doing. So if you are working as an analyst uh, stage, so Excel, MySQL, Power BI, et cetera, become uh, more, uh, more uh, you know, these are your uh, playgrounds, uh, I must say. But if you are like uh, working somewhere as a uh, visualization specialist, then certainly tools like Power BI, Tableau, and Looker might be uh, of uh, help. As you go further up, data engineer uh, will be handling more of SQL servers, MongoDB, and uh, um, Hadoop kind of uh, softwares. And uh, at a data scientist level, again, uh, then it's like, uh, you know, lots and lots of uh, more uh, softwares coming in, like Python, ICE, R script, Apache, Spark, Power BI, Tableau, in any case. So you can see one thing is very common here, that is the Power BI, and of course, the knowledge of Excel. So that's why uh, these two uh, are the uh, first thing that we thought uh, to bring up with, which is the excellent Power BI. Now, another reason why we chose Power BI, because uh, Power BI essentially uh, is uh, one of the market leaders, among the market leaders, as uh, categorized by the Gartner uh, in their uh, uh, survey. So there are other softwares which are in the challengers category, maybe niche players or visionaries. Power BI stands as the leader, and also there is a tableau there. Moving forward, about uh, okay, let uh, let me take this one. Uh, data visualization. Why is it important, and why we should be doing it? Now, let, let's say if I show you a data here as a table, and somebody wants to know, or somebody asks you, a manager asks you, like, okay, what's happening? Probably it will take you a lot of time to even understand what is this, and what exactly is happening, and uh, you know, deriving insights is like a, probably a next to impossible thing. But the moment we change that same table into a visualization, a simple line chart. So just in seconds, you can exactly know what is happening here, right? So that's the importance of data visualization. Why data has to be, um, you know, visualized. Having just the data is one thing, but visualizing is uh, certainly more and more important. Uh, that's why uh, visualization, uh, visualization tools like Power BI and Tableau comes into uh, the play. And more importantly, this amount of data that we have today, that we are handling today, is huge. So it's not just a small table. It's a huge amount of data. That's why we have to uh, focus on the uh, visualization aspect as well. Now, what would be the flow, workflow of any data analysis? So we usually start always with the, uh, to understand the uh, business case. What is the business case? So that is where the whole thing starts. That what is the business demanding? What is the problem statement? Once you understand the problem statement, then you can start building a measurement plan. That, okay, this is the uh, problem that I'm going to address or I'm looking forward to address. So based on that, I will build a measurement plan. Uh, the analyst, they do that. They do uh, the brainstorming and they do it on uh, this side. Then next comes collection and prepare the data. Now, in our case, uh, collection of data is very simple because uh, the data will be collected from the ship. Ships are the generators of the data. And data can be collected in many, many, many aspects, uh, as uh, Captain Selish has uh, also uh, briefed on that. That uh, in today's time, with the uh, good internet connections, we are having lots and lots of uh, live data as well, not just the uh, manual known reports what we used to have earlier. So once we have collected the data, the next process is understand the data. So once we have all the data collected, now begins the analysis part, which is the understanding the data, basis that, analyze and visualize the data. And it is not just visualization, preparing visualization and our job is done. What is more important is to develop data-driven insights from it. If we are not able to uh, derive any data-driven insights from it, then it's just a 
you know, uh, random uh, data, which is just occupying your uh, memory uh, on your computer or uh, mobile phone, perhaps. So uh, you have to derive the data from the, uh, sorry, you have to derive the insights from the data that is you have. And finally, the last step is the measure, test, and optimization part. Now, uh, as far as uh, the course is concerned, the Power BI course is concerned, we will be focusing in the, the central three areas. That is the understanding the data, analyze and visualize, and be able to derive data-driven insights. So that is all about uh, how we are uh, approaching the Power BI. And uh, now a lot of you may be very, very beginner into Power BI. So in the course, we'll be actually addressing right from the beginning, right from, we'll be giving you instruction how to download, download how to install it. And then from there, we will take you uh, up to a level where you will be able to prepare your own dashboards. And whatever data we'll be using are going to be maritime uh, related data itself. So that way you can easily relate, you can easily understand the data and more focus on the how to learn the Power BI part. So uh, that is how uh, the course uh, we have designed it. And the course uh, uh, is divided into uh, two parts, two days actually. And uh, 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 the first and second day we'll be uh, working on a sample data that I'm providing you. So essentially there'll be two different assignments. The first one will be walking through along the class. And the second one I'll be giving you as an homework, which you have to do it on your own. And uh, we have doubt clearing sessions also in between. So Saturday and Sunday, usually we have the class and then we have doubt clearing sessions, maybe somewhere in midweek, uh, we'll be having maybe on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending upon the participants uh, and their availability of time. Usually we do it in the evening. Uh, so people who are in office can also attend and, uh, we will try to, uh, you know, uh, cover up, uh, if any uh, hiccups you are having the initial, uh, struggles that you are facing, we will address to all of those. And finally, on the following Saturday, we'll be having a presentation from the, uh, the participants, basically the participants, whatever they have made, they will show, showcase us what they have uh, prepared, what analysis they have done, what kind of visualizations they have uh, made. So that is how uh, the course is designed. I hope I have not missed out anything, uh, but uh, as far as use cases are concerned, I, I think uh, uh, Venkat sir and uh, Captain Deep, uh, Ashwin has already shared lots and lots of use cases and you must might have uh, seen it. It is not limited to just voice performance or root monitoring. It is almost anywhere and everywhere. So you have to just visualize it. Or you have to understand the uh, problem statement and start creating those uh, uh, data-driven insights. Uh, and uh, towards the end, like uh, Captain Selesh also mentioned that there's a one TB data in his uh, you know, cloud. Uh, there's a limitation. Also, we, we all have that uh, limitation in the cloud data. Now, somebody must have come to the decision, why one TB, why not 1.5 or one, well, why not two TB? So I'm sure the person who came made the decision also must have made a data-driven judgment. So today it's Uthan all jo. about data uh, decisions. Niche and, um, anything else? Uh, yeah. So that's all from my side. Uh, Captain Ivana, over to you. Thanks for a very impactful uh, presentation, very to the point and Thanks for showing actually the whole process and what we will be covering in the um, course as well. Thank you uh, so much, Gaurav. Um, uh, we we now have uh, Rolf and uh, Rolf uh, also did the course from Seam Beyond. He's a technical manager, and uh, so maybe we can have uh, Rolf you know speak about uh, uh, as far as I remember Rolf you took the recorded version you probably didn't take the live one and maybe if you could also discuss your um, um, uh, you know experience in the course as well please hello Captain Rana hey. uh, hello everyone uh, yeah it was uh, I did my course uh, in the month of April and uh, 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 basically, uh, I'm working for uh, as an assistant manager in a crewing uh, crewing department and operations for volume shipping. 
and uh, it is really what before i taking up the course it was very difficult to prepare the reports because it's like uh, we had right ship audits and other things so we have to prepare all retention rates and uh, repatriated uh, repatriated rates and a lot of lot of data so it takes about like for us a weeks time to prepare all the data doing it everything going manually and other things so it was very difficult since like we had i had an uh, excel session with uh, jayshree ma'am and a uh, lot of things uh, made my life easy to prepare the data within like within a two one or two days so it was really a, a, a great course and it helped me a lot in my uh, in my professional life and also it helped my friends also uh showing them the thing and also some of them are already uh, joined this course and uh, it was really great uh, thank you cn beyond for this great opportunity from your end thanks a lot rol thanks and really glad that uh, the course was useful for you so so thanks for that great testimony appreciate it thank you thank you right um so i will share the uh, final part of the presentation wherein i can show you the features of the course and how is it going to be planned and the um, uh, fees for it so the course is 20 hours um, course 12 hours is excel four sessions two weekends saturday sunday three hours each bi four hours two sessions uh, um, uh, each and then uh, two hours of problem solving session and then two hours of report presentation by the candidate um so what are the key things over here is this is instructor led training right so it's not just that you're seeing a video um uh, it will be instructor led you can ask questions at any point of time we will use real time case studies and doubt solving session after each uh, after each session so for example you uh, you have the saturday sunday session after the saturday sunday session we'll also hold a session on wednesday wherein if you have any doubt we can solve that doubt for you as well we give you assignments and the reason for assignment is that you should be able to practice what you have learned right and in these um, assignments i mean if you are able to solve it you know the answer is done um but if you're not able to solve it then you have to do it again and we of course have the doubt clearing sessions um this course will be on our marinet platform you will have the access to the course for the entire one year the recorded uh, uh, part of the course you will have that uh, access we will share the um, uh, the, the uh, information with you the um, whatever sheets we are using we will share that with you the shortcuts we will share that with you you will also have an exclusive email support even after the course so if you have any uh, issues in terms of uh, how do you uh, solve this you have that email support even after the course um these are the course timings uh, as i said and the dates 9 10 16 17 saturday sunday saturday sunday ist this is 10 am to 1 pm ist um uh, we should have specified we have people all around the world uh, attending this session again power bi um 26 27th um uh, 10 to 12 10 to 12 ist we have a doubt clearing session and uh, the uh, assignment presentation by all the candidates on 30th of november um uh, if there are maybe majority of people who feel uh, that we need to change um a particular day time maybe half an hour here and there we are open to it and that's something which we can take it uh, later on um I, let me also show you a couple of add ons before i go to the uh, rising so uh, i i think one is on this integrating chat gpt with uh, excel and bi um right and this is something which we would also teach you how would you integrate chat gpt uh, with excel and bi and uh, we will also share the certificates of the uh, of, of 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 the participation uh, <clears throat> for this course and the certificates will be soft copies these you can also share on your linkedin so on your linkedin bio the the certificates can also be seen um now coming on to the pricing part for the course 
Um, so you could either take an Excel course or you could take an Excel and BI course or you could take um, both of them together. If you take individually one course, the uh, fees is 6499 for each of them. If you take a combined course, the fees is 11999 um, and for the first 10 participants who, uh, who take the course, uh, you have a 10% discount over and above this. So, so if you are only taking this, a 10% discount on this for the first 10 participants, if you're only taking this, uh, this is already discounted, but we are further offering a 10% discount. Um, use the code EXL10, wherein uh, you can, uh, once you punch it on the link, which will be shared on the chat window, you can get the uh, discount. Uh, you, you can automatically get the discount as well. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it from our end and we are uh, open to any questions which you might have for us or for any of the uh, presenters as well. Yeah, Gaurav, go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, one thing I uh, missed out uh, from my side. That was uh, the system requirement for Power BI essentially. Uh, that would be the uh, Windows uh, laptop will be required. Uh, Windows system will be required because uh, uh, a lot of uh, CPRs, they are also using Mac. So uh, Power BI being a Microsoft uh, software, it will, I know, you can use it on uh, Microsoft uh, computer system. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks for clarifying. Okay, we're open for any questions which you would have. Let me go through the chat window. I think this is a very good question which uh, Popan had asked. Uh, is the cross link available between Power BI and Excel and Power Automate? Uh, so you get the data in Excel and the visualization in BI. And uh, Ashwin has answered yes. So uh, Ashwin, are you also doing this? Are, are you have you also automated this? Power Automate. Uh, sorry. Uh, Power Automate. We do not have access because our organization as such has not taken the license full version but i myself have used in the past uh because i have a full microsoft 365 is i'm full user personally so uh, uh I, I i did that automation between uh, power bi power automate and all the power tools actually so uh, in uh Dynamico, we are not using power automate but you can though the question is valid okay from excel to power bi power bi to power automate it's possible yeah you can automate your Power Automate does a lot of things automated if you can, yeah. Great. Um, so then we've had a question from Captain Leroy. The course is online. Time is 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Delhi. Uh, Rohit, uh, as, as we mentioned, it's uh, it's over almost two months over weekends. Uh, Rishikesh, we will receive the certification and on a uh, soft copy of a certification will be issued. Sudarshan, the course fees already been discussed. Um, then Captain Leroy had some technical questions, which honestly I couldn't answer. And then Dinkat has already answered those uh, uh, questions. Uh, okay, Harris question. That's uh, given the rapid advancement in 5G and 6G throughout maritime based. Uh, software automation and AI, how relevant do you think Excel and BI intelligence tool will remain for a maritime professional in 2030? As in, it's a very good question, Harris. And uh, honestly, um, I think you have to start somewhere. And my view, and I'm, I'm open to hear from the experts, is that um, the basic tool which is being used uh, uh, anywhere is an Excel. So for you to just start from somewhere to understand whether you are proficient uh, into a basic tool, that's the reason Excel and BI is there. Whether it will remain or not remain, I don't know. But my sense is I, I don't think you can do away with Excel, BI in the next 10 years or so at least. Uh, of course, you when you have more data, you have to move to the bigger tools. Uh, that's for sure. But, but that's what my view is. I don't know. Um, Ashwin, Venkat, what do you feel about it? Excel is a very, very, very powerful tool. However, I think 
not many would know the full power of Excel because the way that it is created and what we are using is probably a bit sometimes in our whatever we are using, you know, day-to-day uh, <clears throat> -day life or even in, in the industry that we are using. The data analyst, scientists can tell us when they go to the, because I know there is a guy who works in my team in the PMS department. And he said he used to work as a data analyst. Uh, and uh, when he used to call, he said 10,000 pages of data that he used to analyze. I said 10,000 pages of data is like, and he said it used to be done. And he is all about, the, even that guy does a Power BI in R. So he's also one of the, uh, <laughs> the guys who we you know keep uh, keep make it interesting about. So, <clears throat> so he tells me that 10,000 pages, I said, how, how used to handle it? And he said the Excel, and then from there, uh, Power BI and uh, the Python and all these things. So I said, okay. So but there are ways, there are probably what we are doing is just some little bit, bits and pieces of here and there. But uh, Excel is really, really powerful. Yeah. And what Power BI is doing is just to enhance what Excel is doing. But... Uh, Dara, if I may, yeah, as Jashree rightly pointed out, it's, you know, understanding the data. Uh, rather than the tool itself. I mean, Excel or Papa BI, they're all tools, but what Excel does is, you know, uh, gives you a good foundation to understand the data, to understand how the data is being collated, how it has been cleaned, how it has been, uh, the, you know, uh, formatted. So that is a very good tool to, you know, to make your foundation clear, to understand what data means. Once you understand the data, then you can use any tools, uh, be it Excel, be it Power BI or Python. But Excel is an excellent tool to understand data. Great, great. great. Um, th thanks for your inputs, uh, Shailesh and Ashwin. Uh, Can I say something, sir? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Venkat, please. Uh, uh, regarding the relevance of uh, uh, Python, uh, sorry, regular, the relevance of Excel, as you might have seen, there are a lot of uh, you know AI capabilities which have been incorporated into both AI, uh, both Excel also and Python also, and other, also other softwares. And second important addition is that you can even write Python scripts in Excel. That is a new integration that has taken place. So you see, as the new softwares keep coming, Excel is being uh, you know uh, integrated with those kind of softwares inside Excel itself, where you can write the script in Excel itself and get the Python capabilities. You know, so it will always stay relevant because something is going to be merging with this Excel. To give you uh, to enhance your uh, you know experience with uh, playing with data. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. I, I think if Excel has to stay relevant, they have to keep on progressing. That's Excel is freely. I mean, not freely okay though, but it is widely available. Uh, with their new subscription and all, they have made it easier for the industry also for people in the uh, offices also and at a personal level also. So it's you know that's where they can do such things and other software may challenge them at time to time but i think excel is here to stay secure yeah <clears throat> okay. thanks and uh, another thing that i want to point out is in the maritime industry what i see data analysis you see india was predominantly earlier a crewing you know a manpower supply country okay so it is not it is shifting to the other side so there where the other places were Singapore and all Dubai and all, but India is also coping up now with all these HSQ related tasks and India, there is a shift that is happening. So when that comes, this kind of job where data analysis would definitely be required because without data analysis, you cannot do quality, you cannot do uh, any kind of uh, number churning with this kind of tools. Thanks Ashwin. Um, uh, so DF and Om, uh, your question on if you miss an online session, that's okay. Uh, you will have the recording available by Monday. So basically, if you miss either a Saturday or Sunday session, an online recording will be there with you on Monday. It will be on our platform, Marinet. So you will be provided the uh, login ID password. You can view the recording till one year. So from, from the day you start, the, we finish the course till the, for another year, you can view the recording. Uh, anytime. Uh, okay. All right. Um, we know any job assistance. Actually, when the earlier courses which we did, um, uh, 
we uh, because we were getting a lot of opportunities we actually showed uh, uh, presented these uh, persons to so at least i know uh, at least 20 people have been interviewed who have finished this course how many have got uh, a job i i don't know that number but but i know the interviews have happened because a person has done this course and honestly as i speak uh, uh, in in geoserv there's one requirement wherein they were actually asking you know the people who go out of this course they are they will probably be happy to look at uh, uh, you know see uh, people who finish this course so so that's something which we do not promise uh, in terms of a job we, there is no promises in terms of assistance, yes, uh, uh, we can, of course, uh, take your CV to relevant companies since we are partnered to more than 150 odd companies. Uh, all right, Let, let's take, uh, so I'll, I'll come to, uh, there's a question on career transition and I'll come to that question at a later stage, Dick Vijay, okay, Venkat has already answered and I'll commit to, uh, to that question at the end. Um, and let me take this question from Lalit. Uh, Lalit is in disbursement accounting and he wants to switch a career in analytics domain. So is it worth to join the course and how can I transform my career to analytics? And is there any career support? Um, okay. Lalit, uh, see, I, I, you can't switch a career to analytics after doing a Excel BI course. What you can do is you can highlight that now you are able to do your uh, your work a lot more efficiently after doing this particular uh, after learning these tools um, right if you have to switch your career to analytics you have to do much much more um, uh, right uh, so you will have to learn a lot more tools you'll have to do some a few projects and then that transition would happen but this is the starting point as i said for you to understand whether uh, this is a field which is uh, which which you like to do right uh, whether you like to play with data uh, especially on a computer using these tools uh, so this is what it will do in terms of career support as i said we are already partnered to 150 odd companies and um, we can of course take your cv forward but there is no guarantee there is uh, you know uh, no no guarantee for any uh, job uh, as such Okay. Um, no more questions as I see. Uh, let, let's take Digvijay's question. And uh, third engineer, one year in fleet performance, working ashore. Um, uh, his question, and, and this is a question which a lot of people have, whether he should go back to sail, become a chief engineer or pursue the career over here. So I think... Um, Let's hear it from uh, Shailesh first. Venkat has already answered uh, in, on the chat. But Shailesh, what do you feel? See, I think uh, at any given point of time, it is a very personal decision that somebody has to take. I mean, uh, you first have to be financially secure. And uh, as I always say, uh, it is not about coming ashore and working. It is about sustaining. That is most important. So that's a very personal choice and uh, it requires a much more deeper discussion and understanding of what your needs are and where you stand in life rather than just a simple yes or no answer. I, I agree. Right. I, mean, if you, I could add, I mean, yeah. So, I mean, in, in that way, right, I mean, since uh, I've started as an I mean, intern and now promoted to an analyst, so looking forward since I'm in maritime me, I mean fuel EU is coming, EU UK Marvel is there already. So I see a growth in that, uh, this field as well. So just in that context, if I ask, I mean, if I mean family wise, I mean all settled. I mean financially, if you ask, I mean, no issues in that. But am I doing the right? I, I was thinking to stay back since there are more opportunity and since I mean this field is emerging. Every new company is born to have the fleet analyst. I mean, I mean, what I have, I'm seeing right now, I mean, in my small career, but still, I mean, that way, is it okay? I mean, even if I'm giving it upon a ceiling, am I doing something wrong? Or I mean, on that, I mean, in a tech, in a career wise, if I am choosing this, is it okay going forward? So that was the context. I mean. Um. 
let me chip in Digvijay over here. So if this is something which you are liking, right, uh, in your current role, I can tell you there is a lot of um, action happening. There's a lot of opportunities. And uh, if you like what you are doing, um, just because you are not a chief engineer's license, your growth will not be limited, right? In terms of technical, probably, maybe yes, right? But at the end of the day, if you understand the data, if you understand, um, um, you know, what's happening on the business side of things, uh, uh, you, you can reach uh, to, to, to the top, right? Having said that, Chief, becoming a chief engineer helps you in better analyzing the data, right? So if you want to stay on the technical side of things, core technical, you know, how do I interpret things? How do I give well in, uh, you know, better data? I think maybe uh, getting to chief engineer is better. But if you want to, you know, uh, you're on the analysis an analytic side of things, you know, you can become a product manager. Um, you can become a program manager, you know. If that's the kind of field which you're looking at, I honestly, I don't feel that getting a chief engineer will add a lot of value over there. Uh, open for any any of the panelists if you would like to add on to it. Yeah, like uh, I would just say it's a very personal choice like how Silas said. Uh, being a master myself and Gaurav and others as well, we made this transition thinking about something. Okay, well, it, it is different for Captain Rana. It is different for me. It is different for Captain Silas. Okay, and even Venkat for that matter. So all of us made a choice depending on how we wanted to do, what we wanted to do, how we are placed and what we want to aspire to be. Okay, it is very difficult for me to answer you whether if I should have left as a second mate or whether I should have been left as a chief mate or whether I should have left as a master. Okay, mine was clear that till master I was not leaving. So when I became a captain and I stayed for five years as a master also. So it was not about coming ashore or something like that. So it's a very personal choice and depends like what Gaurav, Captain Gaurav said that uh, there are different streams. Okay. Now, if you want it to be pure technical, definitely when, when you want to stay technical, somebody will want you to be a chief engineer, not as a third engineer that they would take that. But if you want to do something that is not about technical and about numbers or something like, as you said, it doesn't need to be a chief engineer. Okay. So it, that line, so it depends what interests you also. That is also cool. If if it doesn't interest you to be at sea and you say that, oh, it's not, I, even I go back every time and I feel like it is not my cup of tea. And you think that being here with your family would even at a lesser salary is fine. And uh, you can do a different career progression. Fine with you. Today, one of my colleagues whom I worked with, <laughs> when I was a third mate and he was a fourth engineer, we used to keep watches and meet at 12. His wife didn't want him to sail. Okay. Today, he is, uh, can you, uh, he is a director with Lockheed Martin. You know, who the, the, they make fighter jets. So, so if he had stayed as a chief engineer, you would have been running ships with slow 30 knot speed or 20 knot speed. Today is flying fighter jet planes uh, as a as an engineer. So it's all uh, he joined Watsila, then he joined some other company, and now he's uh, head of uh, Lockheed Martin in India. So I mean to say, so it's it's a different uh, as a fourth engineer. So he but he was an engineer, yeah. So it's it's just how you want to. I mean, it's there's no limit. Uh, you can and uh, important what you have to stay is relevant. To stay relevant, you have to hone your skills. You have to keep growing. If I stayed 30 years back and still say I don't know Power BI today, I would not I'm not relevant. Really, because it, it will not help me. Okay. The data can keep 10,000 pages like this. Young guy comes and tells me, and tomorrow if there's 10,000 uh, pages of data were lying on my table, I cannot do anything. I would have just kept reading until now. I would have been reading those pages. So honing your skills, staying relevant is important. That's that much I can tell you. Yeah. Yeah, Rana, I would like to add something here. Uh, I agree totally with uh, Captain Ashwin. You have to stay relevant. That is the that is the key. Uh, if you remember, four years back, you came up with this offer to for me to join SmartShip. At that time, I couldn't even you know work uh, in basic Excel. That was my limited knowledge. I was just a chief engineer, just come uh, you know. And when you say vessel performance, I said, what is this vessel performance? New thing, you know. Hum log jo jaaj pe kya ho, idhar shore mein kya karne wale, you know. Log, uh, will they be doing anything better? So I had that kind of an ego, you know, sort of a thing. But when I came here and when first day when Joy came and threw a lot of challenges at me, 
the first week itself customer wants this customer wants that and here i was you know stuck in a place where i couldn't even work in properly excel then i literally pulled out some books on excel started getting it where in the office people said kya apna bete ka books leke aaya kya padhne ke liye so that is the kind of you know response i got and then i started learning excel then once i started learning excel and i was com comfortable i started generating reports showing visualizations to customers and i was getting validations on that then i realized that excel uh, okay i couldn't work purely on excel i had to do something for higher complex model then i learned python you know everything doing at the age of 52 okay i learned all this myself i didn't even attend any course i just attended through nptel youtube and all those lectures which motivated me you know and the passion kept me alive and still keeps me alive i have enrolled myself for 25 courses in udemy till today okay and i'm still doing it so you have to stay relevant you know that passion should drive you it is not whether you are a chief engineer or a master mp you stay relevant you gather skills be flexible you know so if one does not work out other will definitely work the market will always be open for you so that is my advice uh, to taking it a bit further because it's a very deep question and probably most of you may have this doubt like i said i was a master never been to the engine room or i mean to say in we used to go and say bada sahab this uh, you know nut is not tightened or some small thing we used to point out safety inspection and you are done i was offered a job role of an environmental compliance auditor and trainer okay and i did it for six and a half years i'll tell you the first day when i went down to the engine room as an auditor the, there's a 20 year old like seasoned chief engineer like venkat to, to come and tell me that uh, the oil water separator runs like this only this is how it runs okay and this is how you do it and this is all so you know if if at that time I, in in two months i could have just you know i was reading running up and down reading the plans i thought as a master i knew everything i was like char patti pen ke you know i was roaming around like a big boss when this job came of environmental compliance and i have to go down see the bilges see the uh, the waste streams and then tell the chief engineer or the ship staff what is wrong and how you have to comply with marpol or something like that so uh, that was a challenge and if i had not done it at then um, i wouldn't have i mean i would have been thrown out within six months for sure so i spent six and a half years doing it so you know so I, today i can be at stand and talk about any subject on those lines with anybody in the industry and tell you what really marpo caters to what those equipment mean exhaust gas scrubbers boiler bo uh, ballast water treatment system So been to the factory, you've seen the land. So this is exactly what I'm saying. So to be, today, if you do a job and say as a third engineer that you want to do it, it's up to you how you hone your skills and where you want to take it. You know, you just have to stay relevant and keep progressing, keep progressing. There's no shortcut to say, well, you know, to do the hard job. So you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Ashwin. I love the way where we are heading. It's not just about you know a skill you have, but you know. we have people who are passionate to you know give you career advice and you see the experience uh, every one of them have and and as everyone said that you know it's it's that um, drive to learn which will succeed you get you success okay we'll move to the next question from francis is the course relevant for a person working in chartering on commercial side of the maritime business so francis if um the profession involves playing with data uh, absolutely the course will be relevant uh, in commercial there is a lot of data uh, which is being used in fact one of the use cases which we have in our course is uh, the maritime trade so how uh, a particular cargo has gone from one uh, has transported from one place country to another country uh, and how is it uh, uh changed uh, the trends have changed over a period of last 20 years or so so that's one of the exercises which we have so uh, so for sure uh, uh this will be relevant um sudarshan uh, i'm i'm sure you you would have heard what each one of us have said that it's a very personal decision in terms of when is the right time to shift and probably we'll have to take it one on one or, or you know we have a mentoring service from c and beyond and which you could avail or we could connect you to one of uh, the experts as well um, to help you understand when is a you know right time for you to transition it, it, it's your call it's it's a decision which is yours you know it, it's very difficult to generalize it um 
This is one good question from uh, Venkat Srinivasan, and maybe I'll have Venkat, uh, I, uh, you know, request you to answer this. Uh, question is that there's a lot of um, data which is coming through, uh, but is there enough R&D being done? Uh, and maybe Venkar Shalesh, you're the, probably a, a, a working in a company which, which uh, you know, which uh, which works on R and D, right? Uh, uh, so, so what are your thoughts on this, please? Actually, uh, if you see ISO one nine zero three zero is a document in three parts, which tells you what kind of data is required for analyzing the vessels, what kind of quality of data is required. It talks also about you know the digitalization uh, process that is required. And if you have, uh, if you have to do, you know, uh, if you are getting manual data, like from node reports or from high frequency data, how to analyze the data. So there has been a lot of uh, such catalogs available, which talks about how data and what kind of data, some principal data uh, like, you know, uh, shaft power, RPM, speed, depth of the vessel, troughs. These are some of the principal data that, that is required for analyzing any vessel performance. So there are a lot of documents, a lot of research papers. If you go on the net there, it's filled with research papers if you actually go and start reading them. And you will be able to see a lot of uh, good stuff that uh, you know you can actually relate to and get a lot of information from that. Yes, there's a lot of R&D being done and a lot of uh, ISO documents available which talks about this. Uh, your thoughts, Captain Selish? I would say uh, the relevance of Mr. Venkat Srinivasan, the thing is, uh, it's a use case at the end of the day. It is not about the R&D on the data or anything. It is the use case that drives the research. So if my research today is fuel optimization, the data and the R&D will be used on the data set of fuel optimization with respect to, as Venkat said, how efficient the vessel is, how efficient the engines are, what is the payload, what is the weather conditions. Um, but if you're doing a... a what you say, analysis or a use case of predictive maintenance or predictive diagnostics, or as we say, the remaining useful life. So there's a very different set of data set that is used. And yes, there is a lot of R&D that keeps happening. In fact, uh, uh, Venkat himself in our organization drives a lot of R&D on those uh, aspects as well. And, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of research papers available. It's Data or data science in maritime is still in its nascent stage right now. So there's a huge uh, scope that is happening. There's a lot of research that is happening continuously around the world. Yeah, thanks. But again, you know, like uh, I've been working with uh, major companies. Like I work with BW, Bird, Belt, and uh, I also work for uh, Keppel Fells on the rigs, also on the container terminal side. But what happens is finally, you know, we have a lot of data being coming out from the ships. And uh, finally, which are the ones, you know, you then, in fact, you know, like uh, there are some vessels even uh, they are not fitted with old vessels, which are not fitted with the shaft power meters. And then uh, we have to convince the owners to fix a shaft power meter so that uh, we, uh, we get the relevant data to analyze how the performance is even the T sense, you know, like TT and TT sense, like the uh, torque of thrust sensors, which, you know, like where your uh, hull folding is also being monitored and, uh, you know, like when it requires a uh, hull cleaning or even, you know, initially DMU also came out with this thing like a uh, painted propeller and uh, then they came back, you know, painted propeller cannot give you a better performance. And then, you know, like they started to make the things and I was involved in a lot of this and Finally, what had happened was that, you know, like, see, uh, we go in and uh, install uh, uh, fuel efficiency devices, like, uh, I can say, PBC, PBC of, like, probo, propeller boss, cap fins, and maybe stuck and uh, uh, stern thrusters or rudder uh, fins or things like that. But finally, what the, what the uh, uh, makers say is it gives you for 5% of... Uh, uh, fuel this thing you know like but how do you analyze this data actually uh, how do you analyze does it really give that five percent of uh, fuel is it really a five percent of fuel efficiency it comes but when you compare within three four vessels probably one vessel will be giving an higher fuel efficiency uh, the other one might be only a two percent but that's because of uh, uh, other aspects like uh, you don't know how, how your uh, engine is being maintained or how other things are so this is where a lot of confusion 
uh, at arise during my experience which i faced in basically ah uh, if i may answer this yeah so uh, mr venkat the thing is see uh, what you just mentioned is a everyday question i get asked by each of my clients yeah so i mean uh, that is something which i answer on a daily basis uh, let me just tell you one thing uh, uh, you know formula 1 cars yeah the advanced compared to maritime maritime machinery yeah still the formula 1 cars keep improving yeah you have the new drs you have the new fuel efficiency you have the echos echos coming up everything and all and that is a very advanced industry right the formula 1 and the machinery that is there we are not even close yeah maritime maritime uh, machinery or the mechanics of it is still quite uh, old fashion so there is always room for improvement so what you just mentioned out is just a single use case uh, with respect to efficiency uh, with the data related to efficiency yes of course there is uh, a lot of r&d happening there's a lot of makers or oems who are doing a lot of research into making engines efficient you had the mechanical engines you have the electronic engines now you have more uh, retrofit engines and all so electronic yeah. and even the est devices that you mentioned about is all all improving the efficiency of the this thing uh, but what is most important is to understand is the data is the problem statement that you're trying to solve so if the problem statement is fuel efficiency if the problem statement is efficiency you need to have that right set of data sets so if you are calculating fuel efficiency you don't have uh, torque or you don't have load yeah you are only estimating it yeah so the accuracy will change from 98% to 92% in a industry if you are all right with it may work may not work in uh, formula 1 where in uh, recently i think uh, mclin did a pit stop at 5 seconds so you know so it, uh, it has to be very very uh, you know you there's a very specific question that you have uh, but it all depends on the uh, use case that we are working on yes there's a lot of development there's a doom of lot of development and it is uh, every day uh, the industry is moving towards the right direction now we we've not even touched the tip of the iceberg yet but i did a lot of research on this you know for my company when i was with uh, bw as well as birch bulk we had around 70 60 70 ships and i did a lot of uh, research and analysis over it in fact all these uh, spreadsheets and excel sheets and installing the electronic flow meters uh, energy efficient devices and then uh, uh, you know so many things we did there Uh, but finally you know like uh, there were too many data to analyze so many things and uh, you know uh, there was no consistency among uh, from vessel to vessel when compared one vessel was profiting another one was not profiting at all actually so so that's what i just wanted to know if you have done any uh, specialized analysis over this and which are the critical data which uh, might as such as like like now the scrubber which is come into place and bw uh, blast water management system and the requirements which is coming up for that and so many other things yeah so i did a research on that also we had a, a, a payback calculator what will be the cost and how it is going to work out and how many years is going to take it out and uh, how much we spend for this and uh, yeah Anyways, I just wanted to know whether you have uh, any. I'm gonna be more than happy to get on a call with you, with Ralph, and with uh, Pankaj on the same. Yeah. You have a lot of data, for example. You know, like. <laughs> so I can be more than happy to get on a discussion. I had a huge discussion with your technical director in Singapore some time back. So sure. yeah, we can take it take it offline. Absolutely. Okay. Thank yeah, you. If you if you give us the data, we can analyze and give it to you. I mean, like that's what Smartship does actually. and in fact we are doing a lot of uh, research on if you want to know before and after trade off what is the performance uh, you know change we have done actually we have done a lot of research i'm no more with uh, uh, birch bulk or any of these companies because i met with an accident i'm working for a uh, i i cannot travel anymore you know so i'm just working for a, a senior pms manager of a you know erp company marine erp company i'm just doing a erp based software for them it's a A huge company so let's uh, let, let's take this discussion uh, uh, venkat i'd be happy to connect to you with no 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 problem, no problem. Uh, i was just answering his question that's it uh, <laughs> uh, yeah but but sir 
great discussion that we had and it's a very valid question which you had asked uh, venkatesh yeah and, thanks uh, you know, let's let's i don't see any other questions let's come to the last two polls which we have and uh, uh, the first one is so household where people are remaining 41 of us how many of us would be keen to attend this particular course and uh, whether you would be interested for only one or both or maybe you need some more information on it um, so that's one poll and after which i'll have a feedback poll and uh, while you can answer on the feedback but if anyone has any um, um any, any clarification that you want or any feedback that you may want to give on the chat window you may also write over there as well um so do answer the poll question and as i had informed earlier also that uh, recorded sessions will be available for at least 10 years after you finish the uh, session, uh, 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 after we finish the course as well. Okay. Oh, no. And the, okay, I have a few more people who are, who are still answering. I've already got a couple of payments, so already got a couple of registrations as well. Um, so EXL 10 is the code for booking. Uh, EXL 10. It's, it's written in the chat as well, but I'm, I'll write it again. And let me end this poll and the final poll I'm launching. Were your expectations met uh, when, you, uh, when you registered for this particular session? You would have had some expectations. Were they met? Uh, was the session useful for you and how would you rate the session use? So, is this course held every 12 months or more often? Suraj, we intend to do it probably once in four months, thrice a year is what we will intend to do this course. Uh, Venkar, sure, I think we can discuss uh, if you could leave your email ID, uh, what kind of course are you looking at? Uh, you know, we can uh, discuss that with you. Uh, and if maybe if you are only looking for at a couple of sessions, that also something is which we could discuss as well. Uh, sure, Rohit, thanks for your feedback. Yeah. Thanks for the feedback for everyone. I think uh, uh, more or less I see that we are able to exceed or meet the expectations. All of you found the session useful and it's a positive rating for the session as well. So so thanks everyone for, uh, uh, for, for your comments. And uh, thank you so much to the presenters, to the panelists over here. We spent uh, uh, more than two hours uh, over here. I know Ashwin had a lot of other commitments and uh, I requested him to attend for about 20 minutes or so. It's ended up more than two hours. Um, so thank you for everyone, of course, for your time uh, um, and the, the panelists and of course to the um, you know uh, candidates as well. So th thanks everyone. I, I hope it was useful. We intend to do similar such uh, sessions later on if you have any comments on this session or any session that you may want us to take in the near future please leave it in the comment or you may email us on uh, um, uh, education at the rate cnbeyond.com thanks a lot for your time thank you thank, thank you, you for inviting thank you thank you i know i have to sit with or something else as i told you in the morning so yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks for everyone. So I thought I'll come for five, ten minutes and leave after my presentation, but I stayed back since uh, interesting discussion topics. So yeah, all right. Hope to see you all and hope you all benefit from the course. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.